The next sutta is 22.57. The Buddha said, A monk who is skilled in the seven points, monks, who is an investigator of the three ways, he is called accomplished in this Dhamma Vinaya, one who has reached master, mastership superman. i just stop here for a moment. You notice here, the Buddha says, accomplished in the Dhamma Vinaya. The Dhamma Vinaya is the totality of the Buddha's teachings in the suttas. The Buddha always refers to his teachings as the Dhamma Vinaya. Uh, the word Tipitaka was coined much later. The Buddha never used the word Tipitaka or Tripitaka. And in the Anguttara Nikaya, the Buddha explains uh, Dhamma Vinaya as meaning Sutta and Vinaya. And so, the Buddha's teachings, uh, according to the suttas, are the suttas and the vinaya. And the Buddha continues, And how monks is a monk skilled in the seven points? Herein monks, a monk fully knows body, the arising of body, the seizing of body, and the way going to the seizing of body. He fully knows the satisfaction there is in body, the misery that is in body, the escape from body. He fully knows feeling in like manner and perception and volition. He fully knows consciousness. He fully knows the arising of consciousness, the seizing of consciousness and the way going there too. He fully knows the satisfaction that is in consciousness, the misery that is in consciousness and the escape from consciousness. And what monks is body? It is the four great elements and that materiality which is derived from the four great elements, that monks is called body. From the arising of nutriment comes the arising of body. From the seizing of nutriment is the seizing of body. And the way going to the seizing of body it is, is this Aryan Eightfold Path, namely right view, right thoughts, etc. I'll just stop here for a moment. Eh? So here the Buddha is saying, uh, body uh, is the four great elements uh, and the materiality that is derived from the four great elements. What are these four great elements? Normally we call it earth, water, fire and wind. But earth, water, fire and wind is not actually earth, water, fire and wind. It is the uh, characteristic of these four things. The earth element refers to the hardness characteristic. For example, if I touch this metal, it is hard. So to me, this is the earth element. Uh, so earth is not actually earth, but the characteristic of hardness. Uh, and earth water, water refers to the quality of cohesion. Uh, call it, uh, uh, water tends to cohere, come together. For example, it is because we have water in our body eh, that we have a certain shape. Suppose you were to dehydrate yourself, take away all the water in your body, what happens eh, is that you cannot have this form. Eh, you will collapse. The rest of your body will collapse eh, if you don't have water in your body. Uh, so water refers to the element of cohesion. Eh. Fire. Fire refers to the element of heat, uh, uh, hotness, uh, heat, uh, or coldness. Uh, coldness is the lack of the fire element. Uh. And the last one, wind. Uh, wind refers to motion, uh, movement. Uh, because we have the wind element in our body, uh, that's why uh, the blood flows in our in our body. The the uh, the food we take in uh, moves through our body, uh, winds uh, pass through our body, uh, uh, sometimes out of our body, and sometimes uh, from the top uh, as we burp, uh, air comes out. Uh, uh, so that is the four great elements. And the materiality that is derived from the four great elements uh, uh, refers to, for example, uh, um, odor, uh, taste, elasticity, 
uh, growth, decay, impermanence, etc. Uh, yeah. So, uh, from the arising of nutriment uh, comes the arising of body. Mm. There must be nutriment uh, for the body to arise. From the seizing of nutriment is the seizing of body. If there's no nutriment for the body, uh, the body wastes away. And after a certain number of days, uh, the body will die. And the way to the seizing of body is the Aryan Eightfold Path. Uh, the path uh, to the ending of suffering. Uh, mm. And the Buddha continues, That ease, that pleasure which arises because of body, that is the satisfaction that is in body. In so far as body is impermanent, is fraught with suffering and unstable, that is the misery that is in body. That restraint of desire and lust, that putting away of desire and lust, that are in body, that is the escape from body. Whatsoever recluses or Brahmins, monks, but thus fully understanding body, its arising, its ceasing, and the way going to its ceasing, by thus fully understanding the satisfaction, the misery of body, and the way of escape from body, are on the path to weariness, to dispassion, to the seizing of body, they are well on the path. They that are well on the path are firmly grounded in this Dhamma Vinaya. Moreover, monks, whatsoever recluses or Brahmins, by thus fully understanding body, its arising, its seizing, and the way going to its seizing, by thus fully understanding the satisfaction, the misery, and the escape from body, they who are on the path to weariness for body, Dispassion, the seizing of body, are liberated without grasping. They are truly liberated. For them it may be said, there is no more the whirling round. I'll just stop here for a moment to comment. Eh? So here the second part, the, body, the Buddha is saying, eh? that pleasure which arises because of body, that is the satisfaction that is in body. For example, uh, sensual desire. Uh, uh, because of the pleasure uh, that arises uh, from sensual contact, uh, then we have the satisfaction uh, uh, or the pleasure uh, that arises. Uh, that is the satisfaction that is in body. Uh. But in so far as body is impermanent, uh, is fraught with suffering and unstable, uh, that is the misery that is in body. So from the body we can get a certain satisfaction, we can get a certain pleasure out of body. But because body is unstable by nature, it can become sick. Eh? And when it becomes sick eh? or it grows old, eh? then eh, you get misery out of the body. Now that restraint of desire and lust, that putting away of desire and lust that are in body, that is the escape from body. Uh, so in order that you don't have a body again to suffer, you must put away the desire and lust for the body. As long as we have a desire and lust for the body, then we will continue to have a body after another body. And when you have a body and a mind, then you have to suffer for it. And so when we understand that, then we put away the desire and lust for body, then we are on the path to weariness or disenchantment, to dispassion, to the seizing of the body. And if we are on the path, eh, then we understand, we are firmly grounded in the Dhamma Vinaya, in the teachings of the Buddha. Eh? Mm. And then later there will be no more the whirling round, samsara. And what monks is feeling? These six seeds of feeling, namely feeling that is born of contact with eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, from contact with mind, this monks is called feeling. From the arising of contact comes the arising of feeling. From the seizing of contact is the seizing of feeling. And the way going to the seizing of feeling is this Aryan Eightfold Path, namely right view, right thoughts, etc. That ease, that pleasure, which arises because of feeling, that is the satisfaction that is in feeling. In so far as feeling is impermanent, fraught with suffering and unstable, this is the misery that is in feeling. That restraint of desire and lust, 
that putting away of desire and lust which are in feeling. That is the escape from feeling. Now whatsoever recluses or Brahmins, monks, by thus fully understanding feeling, its arising, its ceasing, and the way going thereto, by thus fully understanding the satisfaction, the misery that is in feeling, and the escape from feeling, are on the path to weariness at feeling, on the path to dispassion, for the utter ceasing of feeling. They are well on the path. They that are well on the path are firmly grounded in this Dhamma Vinaya. Moreover, monks, whatsoever recluses and Brahmins, by fully understanding these things, are truly liberated. For them, it may be said, there is no more the whirling round. I just stop here for a moment to comment huh? uh, that uh, the satisfaction, uh, firstly, feeling uh, arises uh, from contact uh, with the six uh, sense uh, organs, uh, with eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. Uh, when there is contact, uh, uh, meaning uh, when a form appears before the eye, uh, the seeing consciousness arises, uh, and when you pay attention, uh, then uh, a feeling arises. So feeling arises because of eye contact, ear contact, nose, tongue, body, and mind contact. Uh, so uh, that is feeling. Uh, from the seizing of contact uh, is the seizing of feeling. When there's no more contact, then there's no more the uh, feeling arising. The way going to the seizing of feeling uh, is practicing the Aryan Eightfold Path. Uh, that is the permanent seizing of feeling, uh, not a, a temporary seizing. Uh, the, of course, the temporary seizing is just no contact, then there is no uh, feeling. But the permanent uh, seizing of feeling is the Aryan Eightfold Path. The pleasure which arises because of feeling, that is the satisfaction of feeling, uh, is impermanent. Uh, because feeling is fraught with suffering and unstable, that is the misery in feeling. Uh, and the restraint of desire and lust uh, in feeling, uh, that is the escape from feeling. Uh, uh. Now, we know uh, that the whole economy uh, of the country uh, is based uh, on getting good, pleasant feelings. If you can create something uh, that can give people uh, good feelings, uh, you'll be able to sell the product, right? Uh, so our whole economy, uh, for example, the video shows, uh, video cassettes now are very popular. Uh, if you can create a good show and people enjoy seeing that show, uh, they are willing to pay. Uh, similarly, if you are able to uh, have a, uh, produce a good sound, for example, uh, uh, a good sound, people like the music, uh, uh, people are willing to pay uh, for the music. Uh, so these uh, all have to do with uh, good feelings. Uh, uh. And the Buddha continues, And what monks is perception? These six seeds of perceiving, perception of sights, perception of sounds, of smells, tastes, tangibles and ideas, that monks is called perception. And, the, and for those who, are, who fully understand it, there is no more the whirling round. Uh, so similarly, uh, with uh, contact, uh, after feeling uh, arises uh, perception. Uh, and what monks are volition? There are these six seeds of vol volition. The will with respect to sight, sound, smells, taste, tangibles, and thoughts or ideas. These monks are called volition. From the arising of contact comes the arising of volition. From the seizing of contact is the seizing of volition. And the way going to the seizing of volition is this Aryan Eightfold Path. That ease, that pleasure, which arises because of volition, that is the satisfaction that is in volition. In so far as volition is impermanent, fraught with suffering and unstable, that is the misery of volition. That restraint of the desire and lust that are in volition, that putting away of the desire and lust that are in volition, that is the escape from volition. Whatsoever recluses or Brahmins, monks, fully understand these things as before. For them it may be said there is no more the whirling round. And what monks is consciousness? 
these six seeds of consciousness seeing consciousness hearing smelling tasting touching and mind consciousness this monks is called consciousness from the arising of nama rupa mentality materiality comes the arising of consciousness from the seizing it seizing the way going to its seizing is just that arin eightfold path in this way monks a monk is killed in the seven points i just stop here for a moment so with the uh, perception and volition uh, is just like for feeling because of contact uh, uh, then you have feeling followed by perception followed by volition but with consciousness uh, the six uh, types of consciousness uh, seeing hearing smelling taste touch and mind consciousness uh, consciousness here is said uh, to arise uh, because of nama rupa Ah, uh, nama rupa is actually mentality, materiality. That means phenomena, phenomena that consciousness uh, cognizes. Ah, uh. uh, that's why uh, nama rupa is phenomena. Ah, uh, it arises together with consciousness. When consciousness arises, ah, uh, it has an object, and that object is nama rupa. So. Uh, nama rupa is not body and mind although generally uh, people translate nama rupa as body and mind nama is actually feeling perception volition contact and thinking or attention uh, you notice uh, nama uh, does not uh, have uh, uh, does not contain consciousness uh, so nama is not the mind Uh, just now earlier we said uh, the four things comprise the mind uh, uh, in the five khandas, the five aggregates. Uh, uh, feeling, perception, volition, and consciousness can be said to be mind. But nama does not contain consciousness, so it is not a mind. Uh, so from the arising of nama rupa comes the arising of consciousness. From the seizing of nama rupa. It's seizing because uh, phenomena is that which consciousness cognizes. So when uh, consciousness arises, uh, it, con- it, it, it arises together with phenomena, and when uh, consciousness seizes, uh, it seizes together with phenomena, nama rupa. Now, uh, and how monks is a brother is a, is a monk and invest and how monks is a monk an investigator of the three ways. As to that, monks. A monk investigates things by way of the elements, dhatu, by way of the sense spheres, ayatana, by way of causal happenings, paticca samuppada. That is how he he is an investigator of the three ways. A monk who is killed in the seven points, monks, who is an investigator of the three ways, he is called accomplished in this dharma vinaya, one who has reached mastership, superman. That's the end of the sutta. So here, the last part, the Buddha is saying uh, that uh, uh, we should investigate by these three ways. One is the dhatu elements. Elements may mean the eighteen elements, uh, the six sense of uh, six sense organs: uh, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. The six sense objects: the uh, forms, sounds, smells, tastes, uh, tangibles, and ideas or thoughts huh? and uh, uh, six sense consciousness huh? uh, seeing consciousness hearing consciousness uh, smelling consciousness tasting consciousness con- uh, touching consciousness and thinking consciousness so that may be the elements huh? uh, or it can also mean the four great elements huh? earth, water, fire, wind It can also mean the six elements: uh, uh, earth, water, fire, wind, space, and consciousness. And the second way is to investigate by way of the sense spheres, ayatana. Uh, this one should be more of the six sense uh, doors. Uh, just now I mentioned the six sense uh, objects and the six sense consciousness and the six sense organs. Uh. By way of causal ha- happenings, uh, paticca samuppada is dependent on origination. Uh, how uh, dukkha arises uh, through the twelve uh, links of dependent origination and how they cease. Uh, uh. 
So if a monk or if a person understands, uh, investigates, uh, he investigates by these three ways, uh, and then uh, he is accomplishing the Dhamma Vinaya. Perhaps I'll stop here, uh, and uh, if any questions, uh, we can discuss it. Uh.